Hi, everyone. If anybody's watching right now, can you get a thumbs up and let me know that this is all working, that it's all coming through? I'm going to give a second <laughs> and make sure <laughs> that it is. Katie, if you're on, you could say a little something too. She's one that is the uh, the man behind the curtain. So she just, uh, she runs everything on the backstage side. So there you go. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Yay. Okay. So everybody's here. Yay. Okay. Um, I wanted to, uh, first of all, thank you guys for being here on a Thursday and uh, taking a step back from what's going on in the world right now, which is a lot. And, uh, and just to learn a little bit about voiceover and uh, maybe escape a little bit and be creative and, uh, and do your thing. So, um, and what we're going over today is uh, the one sentence that will change your voiceover career forever. Okay, so uh, this is a very important topic to me. And it's one that I think uh, will speak to a lot of people that are watching this, especially to you actors out there and people that are creative, uh, that are obviously watching backstage. Maybe you're subscribed to backstage. Maybe you're looking uh, to fulfill your creative potential, whatever. This is a very, very important topic to me. So um, I'll tell you a little bit about who I am so you know whether to take my advice. <laughs> I do that so that you can see. Eh, maybe she knows, maybe she doesn't. Uh, I My name is Lori Burke. I have worked as a professional voiceover artist and on-camera actress and singer and on-air host for uh, over 15 years, 15 to 20 years. It gets foggy there. Uh, you know, you're always you're always working. Uh, I've been in hundreds of voiceover projects, hundreds of on-camera projects. Um, I've been on uh, actually over thousands of voiceovers have I recorded from being the voice of Google Voice to working in commercials to uh, narrations tech, working with Silicon Valley, uh, the Emmys, uh, Common Sense Media, um, films like Jexy, um, and uh, singing jingles, animation, stuff like that. So. I've also worked in casting uh, behind the camera, in front of the camera. Sometimes I am the camera. No, and uh, and so I've been in casting for voiceover as well as for uh, camera, uh, on camera things. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of basis of maybe uh, taking a little bit of advice, I hope, uh, that I might give you today. And uh, this is basically about my my whole belief of the sentence that you say is, is what your life becomes. So I'm a professional voiceover artist, okay? I'm also a, a virtual voiceover artist, meaning I have done this, set up my own studios, had my own business uh, for the entire time from the beginning. So virtually I've been working just like how everybody is right now. I've kind of been doing that for a long time, not seeing anybody just being in my own home studio. So that being said, who do I have here that are actors? Who's on here from actors? Uh, Hi, Isaac, be you. Um, hi, Lori, hi. Hi, uh, Maluka, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but hello from Africa, I love it. I'm assuming that you might be actors uh, that, are, uh, that are in here that are interested in getting into voiceover. And what I can say about that is that I know that when I started my acting career, uh, the minute that you say that you're an actor, someone then asks you, oh, really? Well, what have you been in? Oh, what, what can I see you in? What have you done? And it's almost like this automatic judgment, right? It's kind of hard to say that you're an actor when you haven't done a lot yet. And when you haven't quantified yourself, you know, to, to be that, which I think is unfortunate because you're an artist, right? Someone that paints that's an artist is just an artist, right? They're an artist. The difference in there is to say if you are a professional artist, professional, okay? So, um, I know that for me, it was very, very, very hard first to say that I was an actress, even though I was I was acting, I was in things, I was doing things. I wasn't, this is past studying. I was actually doing things. It was still hard for me to say because I didn't feel like I was famous or I wasn't um, on anything. I wasn't on a series. I wasn't on anything that some people might have seen. And I remember being in a musical stage. I do a lot of stage as well. Um, and my mother said, I said, I just you know, I don't feel like I'm, I can call myself a professional. And she said, you're doing this show right now. Right. And I said, yeah, but I'm doing it and I'm not really getting money. I'm kind of getting whatever it was that they were offering very, very little. Uh, she said, well, are you getting 
water? Are you getting paid in food? Are they paying for this? Are they paying for that? I said, yeah, they are. And she said, well, then you're a professional. My mom is an ultimate professional, by the way. She's a professional musician. Um, but that just clicked in me. Okay, so I am getting compensated. This is when I, I mean, this is years and years and years ago, but I am getting compensated. I am a professional. I had to really do this mind trick to myself to say, you're a working actor. You're a working actor. This is huge, right? This goes over into voiceover as well. Okay. So I'm going to first, let me just give you the definition of professional. Cause I looked this up for y'all. I, I mean, I wanted to like, make sure that I had some, some information to back up what I've always been feeling and what I went through on my journey. A uh, professional, a professional is a member of a profession or any person who earns their living from a specified professional activity. Now I'm going to say not just earns their living uh, because most people that are in the arts are doing many things to support the fact that they are trying to work in the arts, right? It's not just one thing. It's not just full time. A lot of times you have these other jobs. And when I first started out, I, I did a million jobs. I, I really have done a million jobs. <laughs> and I always say, it's like, I'm 187 years old, you know, in work years anyway. So um, I still believe that you're professional if you're getting paid for it. If, if you're getting somehow compensated for it, then you can call yourself a professional. Another uh, definition, engaged in a specified activity as one's main paid occupation rather than as a pastime. That's a real big thing for you people that are studying uh, voiceover arts as well as acting. Uh, you are in it right now, right? Hopefully you're in it to win it. I mean, you're in it to just just conquer it right? And really do this. If it's not full-time, then at least a really decent part-time. Uh, and so uh, that's something right now, it's an, it's an activity that's not just a pastime, right? You're passionate about it. It's not just a pastime though, right? So um, belonging to a trained profession, right? Voiceover is a trained profession, as is acting. Earning a living in the performance, practice, or teaching of something that is usually a pastime. Again, that pastime thing. Think of a professional golfer, right? You may golf, but then there's a professional golfer. So how can you become a professional, right? That's the next question. And the answer is you want to become an expert in the skills and the tools necessary to do your job, right? So you want to study, you want to study with somebody. Anybody that's watched any other video that I've done anywhere knows how big uh, how, how much and passion I am about studying. I'm also a coach. I'm a voiceover coach. So there's that, but I really, for me, it made all the difference in the world that I studied. It gave me confidence. It gave me, uh, the step before saying that I'm a professional, right? Because I had to study to learn my craft, to be good enough in my head and, and externally by people, let's say that, that were, uh, that were judging me or, or watching me or get hiring me. Uh, before I can call myself a professional, I had to do those things, right? So study is a big thing, get feedback, start working, get compensated, know your trade. Here is comes the one sentence that I was talking about, okay? Um, the one sentence that I was talking about uh, is, I am a professional voiceover artist. Now, how this changed my life, not only what I just went over in the last five minutes or 10 minutes, however I've been talking, um, but for uh, Rayleigh's on a commercial I've done. Uh, this was an on-camera commercial. I think I did two or three of them on camera. Uh, and I played a busy mom, right? With, with uh, a dog and a couple kids. Very fun shoots, by the way. Uh, as I was on that commercial, uh, you know, they're, they're long days. You're on there a lot. And I had, it was one of those big commercials where you're like, whoa, there's, you know, I don't know, 10 people flew in from all, all around the country to be there that were executives for Rayleigh's. I had a director, I had a producer, I, everybody was there. They're watching it from Video Village way over in the other room. They're watching me, they're directing. I mean, it's just all happening, right? And I mentioned, I think a, a few times with the mic on it, not on purpose. I think I was just kind of mentioning it like, yeah, by the way, if this doesn't turn out, I'm a voiceover artist. Um, I have a home studio you know, I can, I can do that as well. They'll usually get you into a studio that they like, that they work with. But I mentioned that, oh, I'm, oh, what kind of voiceover? Well, I do a lot of tech. I do a lot of this. Uh, I do a lot of commercials, da, 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 da. So, you know, these conversations were being had over a two to three day uh, period of time. So after we wrapped the second commercial, my agent called me and said, Lori, they want you to be their voice. They want you to be their voiceover. 
because they said, oh, she does voiceover. We really like her voice. And she played the character. That's great. We want that same character. We want her voice because she's a professional voiceover artist to come in every week and record all of our promo for our commercials, for our store and everything. Right. I've told this story before and I legitimately mean this, that I cried when I got that that phone call because that meant that I was a working voiceover actor every week. That meant I was getting paid every week. It's almost like a normal life, right? For you people that are are in this industry, even if you're just starting out, I know that that you know how this industry is. You know, it's a lot of riding the waves, riding the waves. So um, all because I mentioned it. They might have said they liked my voice anyway, but I really think, I mean, they had advertising agencies. They had many people on their roster that they could have hired to do this. It was because I actually mentioned it and I actually said, I'm a professional voiceover artist. So I so believe in that sentence. And I believe this with your with you actors out there, with you singers out there. As soon as you start doing something and you get paid for it and you start building up your, your repertoire and your, um, you know, your real or demo or whatever it is, and you have something to present, you are professional. And that will change your whole dynamic of how you look at this career and how you live in your space and how you promote yourself without being over, you know, you're not being like salesman, like hire me, hire me, hire me. You're saying, I do this professionally. This is what I do for a, for a living. And ultimately that's what we want to do, right? Some, some people may want to be famous. Some people may want whatever it is, you know, they're, they're 15 minutes here or there. There's a lot of things you could do for that. This is an art form, I truly believe. And I love, and I'm so grateful for the fact that I've been working in this and a working actor and a working voiceover artist and singer and host for this long. And I'm still doing it, by the way. I'm still doing voice. I'm still doing all these things and getting paid for it. But it all began once I, I took it into myself and I said it out loud, I'm a professional voiceover artist, okay? So, um, I would love for you guys to get to that place if you haven't already. If you're already there, congratulations. That's awesome. Start using that sentence everywhere you can in no matter what field you're working in right now. If you're not, please study. Please study, get your demo together, get everything that you need to feel secure in this and um, and to feel like you are an actual voiceover artist and, and a professional voiceover artist. I don't if you don't feel that yet, please don't say it, okay? Because there are people that say things and they get in the studio or they get on set and it kind of, it goes backwards. It goes sideways. That's not going to help you in the long run. It's not going to help you to say that you do something but, and not be able to do it. It's not. Uh, it Your reputation will not go very far after that. They want to hire somebody that they know knows what they're doing in a studio, knows how uh, what their voices are, how to work on a mic, how to take direction. There's a lot of things like that. I'm giving a course uh, in next month, I think, next month uh, for in this, in being a virtual voiceover artist and having your own business. Uh, go to virtualvoiceover.com. That's the plug I'll give. But, um, but I'd love to see you there because I'm really excited about it. But um, there are a lot of factors that go into being a professional voiceover artist and having a long career if you just want to do one thing here and there, you know, go do that. But if you want to look at this like an art form that I think it is, and it's and it's also voice acting, they're all intertwined, then please study and uh, and get your tools up and then go tell everybody and then go shout it from everywhere and uh, and start booking more jobs. OK, so I'm going to take some Q&A and uh, because last week we got cut off a little bit, too. So if there's anybody here from last week, uh, I was talking about how to work from virtually anywhere, again, virtual voiceover from anywhere, uh, feel free to ask that too. So I am going to look, um, I saw you in the agent live. Oh, thank you. Okay, uh, you, know, you wanna be one of the greatest actors of all time, grateful for the abundance of opportunities coming my way, grateful for Lori. Oh, well, thank you, Isaac. I really, really appreciate that. I am getting there. Um, some of them already went up, so I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to scroll a little bit. Any great online resources to study? Well, GM Richards, besides my course, go to virtualvoiceover.com. I haven't quite sent out all the information yet, so just sign up on my website. I think it might say waitlist or it might not, doesn't matter. Just sign up and you'll get notified uh, if you're interested in that. It's gonna be a boot camp uh, first. And um, that should be really exciting. Just kind of like what you need and kind of more of this and more interaction. It's all live, so more interaction. Uh, and uh, always hard finding worthwhile courses. Well, hopefully you would find mine a worthwhile course. <laughs> if, you get on, if you get on my site, you can see some of my lovely students that have been really nice and left some uh, 
some really nice comments and some really nice videos about it. So see if that that grooves with you. You have to, I, I, if it's not me, that's fine, but I want you to really study with somebody that is like-minded like you and sees things the same way that you do going into this career. Because again, it's a career, um, at least I'm, I'm very uh, protective of it, <laughs> but uh, hopefully you find something that, that you really like and somebody that you can actually see that has done it, that you wanna model yourself after. after. So that thing, I'm going back now and, and going through this. Um, it's hard to find roles because of COVID. I can't go to the US because I live in Africa. Maluka, I know I hear you. And it's so, um, it, the thing about it is we, even I'm in LA and even that has been a struggle. You talk to any actor and uh, that has, I, I think you're talking about acting, uh, that has been through this and during this time and everything is virtual that we're now kind of starting to ramp up and do more. Of course, voiceover is one of those things where you could do in your own studio. Again, I've been having my own studio since the very, very beginning, right? Since I did Google Voice from my own studio, I did Channel 36 from my own studio, I did a lot of things and my own clients. So that's why I keep talking about this career because it's been pretty bulletproof during this time. Uh, if not more, if not, it's even gone more because some of the, the on-camera they can't get the people, so they just want to do voiceover instead. As far as for acting, uh, again, I would get a setup for yourself uh, and just make sure that you can send in auditions. I know that a lot of these uh, castings, especially on backstage, uh, have been one of those video uh, auditions. So you can just get the lines in front of you and do that. Of course, in voiceover, you get the lines and you record it and you send it in to them. You could do it over Zoom. Uh, you could do a lot of things just, uh, so don't feel alone in that, I guess is what I'm, is what I'm trying to say. Don't feel alone in that. That's everywhere. I don't, if you're in Africa, you're in Africa. I've got friends that are actors in Paris. I've got friends that are actors in Switzerland. Um, it's everywhere. Okay. So I would really start looking at setting up your own little studio or at least a little place where you feel comfortable that the lighting's good and the sound is good and you could deliver your auditions that way. Uh, what I have seen is that as as the productions open up, of course, the studios open up, but I have also been um, approached for hosting saying, hey, we'll send you everything. We'll send you everything. You set it up at your house. So there's a lot of ways to work around it right now. OK, just keep that in mind. And, and you could also what a great time to dive into voiceover. <laughs> right. So um, there you go. And and you can start from wherever. That was my that was my whole uh, talk last week was. You know, I've I've done voiceover from all over the world. I've built I've built little mini studios all over everywhere I've traveled. I bring all my stuff with me. I'm constantly upgrading and learning. That's what it's all about is what works better. And uh, you can be able to do this wherever you are in the world. So I hope that that helps. Uh, let me look a little bit more. Sorry, I have to do this. Uh, and great. Okay, da 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 da. Um, okay, I'm on voiceover roles. Why are some voiceovers? only looking for people from a certain place in the world. You know, it's all by accent. It's all by accent. So I don't know, um, except that they also want to have a directing session and your directing session, they might want to have it on the same time. So what I would recommend then is if you do have a reel, I hope you have a reel, um, that you can send them a demo or they give you a script and you audition, maybe add a little note and say, I realize I'm in Africa. Uh, I am willing to, you know, go on whatever time schedule that you're on and all time zone that you're on. And also source connect is a big thing to invest in. If you're already working, I don't know if you're already working, um, but uh, you know, already have that voiceover career going, but source connect is something that you, uh, can get it's thirty five dollars a month if you choose to go the monthly instead of the forever plan, and it actually connects you to another studio anywhere in the world. Okay, so when you speak into the microphone, it goes to the other studio. So that is critical right now for the working voiceover artists that have agents. It, every almost every single audition I get is for that. Now I have my own clients that I just, they know me already. So I just record in my studio and I send it, send it to them. But for everything else, Source Connect seems to be the thing that they're going to. And that's just connecting your studio, your home studio with their studio, a professional studio. 
And that way there shouldn't be any reason why they wouldn't work with you. Okay. Um, another way, uh, best way to motivate yourself in voiceover. Oh, Sindoro. I know I'm saying all the names of that best way to motivate myself. First of all, I watch a lot of TV. I watch Bob's burgers, which I freaking love. And then I have, um, a friend of mine that, that is a producer of American dad and that's awesome too. And family guy. I love these animated characters. I watch that and that really gets me motivated. That's number one, right? Number two, I also listen to a lot of commercials. I'm constantly kind of coming up with new voices. I have done many videos on warmups that you can do. That always kind of gets me into it. And um, also commercials that you can read out loud. Uh, getting, just trying to find these different voices. I don't know if you're in animation or if you're uh, skewing more to commercials, but uh, in any case, just keep reading, keep reading, keep reading out loud and really have fun with it. I mean, the whole thing is this is an artistic, you know, uh, craft. So have fun with it. Right. It shouldn't just be reading whatever. Even when I read tech things, I laugh about that because I don't know what I'm talking about. And, you know, that's my that's my talent is that it sounds like I know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. But the person who wrote this script, they really know what they're talking about. So my job is to make it sound uh, very believable and supported. So um, let's see. Can you give us some places where we can find worldwide voiceover roles? Uh, Maluka, again, I think Backstage has this. Uh, backstage, you can chime in here, but um, they reach all over. I know you're in London. I know that it, it's, you know, it's online, so it's all over, but um, they can probably list some of the places that they uh, have offerings to, you know, that they post jobs for. I hope that works. Um, you know, I also encourage you to look in your own hometown and look around you and uh, see where you can uh, get some some auditions, uh, agencies, things like that. Okay, on voiceover roles. Okay, da 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 da. Um, can you give us da 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 da? Family Guy has great voices. Yes, GM, it has. Um, hi again. Uh, more about voiceover roles. Um, why do they always look for Brits or Italians, especially far as women go? I haven't heard. I haven't heard that. I don't know where are you. Where are you, uh, Lakeisha? Where are you writing from? because that would, um, that would probably dictate a lot. I know in the US, it's not really as many Brits. There are, I would say that would be the second, you know, it's either a neutral American and then British uh, roles. I haven't had a lot for Italians as women, ever I had a lot as Italians for women. Um, so Lakeisha, maybe you can say where you're from and maybe that will shed a light. Maybe I can help you out a little bit more. How do you stand out with the market saturation? You know, GM, be good at what you do. Be good at what you do. Once you, I don't know if you have a, a reel yet, uh, but hopefully you have a really standout reel, a really good demo reel, and that you are constantly uh, answering ads, you know, uh, looking at things that are posted and sending in things and just getting better and better. Hopefully you're working with a coach or you did work with a coach already that can show you kind of your, your main assets, what you, what your strengths are and what maybe things that you might want to look into developing a little bit more of. There's a huge uh, amount of different genres in voiceover. So that's another thing, you know, finding your niche. Uh, we work a lot on that. I, I know I do with my students a lot. And I usually can tell within the first, first or second, probably the first time that I work with somebody, what their niche is. You know, I, I can just tell from, from how they're reading. Uh, and that's in another video, all the, vich the niches and things like that. So hopefully um, that will help a little bit. How do I set up a vo voiceover studio? And do I need to invest in expensive equipment as a beginner? Louisa, no, you do not. And I have something on my YouTube about this. Uh, I have a, especially look at the one for microphones on my YouTube channel. Um, you don't. I, I'll, I'm a big believer in starting where you're at, right? So don't let anybody say that you have to invest tons of money and all this stuff. You know what you invest in? Invest in being good. Invest in reading and in, invest in knowing your instrument and knowing your voices and being professional. Exactly what I said at the beginning of this whole thing. Uh, if you if you're just tuning in now, go to the front, go to the, the beginning of this uh, of this video and hopefully that'll help. That's where you put your money. OK, because uh, you can you can pretty much set up pretty inexpensively. I've got a, a, some setup uh, things that I offered or that I suggested that I've used uh, on my again on my YouTube channel. 
I know I have a list of some beginner mics and some uh, things like that. I get more into that in my course, but uh, just know that you don't have to, you know, blow your whole budget to do it and see if you really want to do it, right? You really want to take some classes and see if you want to do it. Take a boot camp. Um, okay, uh, we have notices from all over the world. Backstage chiming in. We have notices from all over the world, so you might want to get on that. Um, what program should we use for editing? Ashley, that's all on you. I'm a Mac girl. I have Logic. Uh, you might be, or you might have a GarageBand for your recording. I'm not quite sure what you're using. Some people use Pro Tools. Uh, some people use Audacity. You know what? I always say the best software you have is the one that you know how to work. That's the basic thing, right? I don't know if you're a singer too, but I, I am. And I know that I, I have used GarageBand forever since I started. I mean, I'm in Logic now, but that was so good for singing too, because with jingles and things like that. And I was just the way I can drag in music and then also uh, sing on top of it and the different tracks. It was just very user-friendly to me. I know it's not for everybody, but to me it was. So uh, it depends on how much you need. Really for, for voiceover, you don't need extensive editing unless you're creating your own commercials, in which case that is a whole other ball of wax and something that is for another video. So uh, let's see, I uh, did a whole thing on it. Okay, da, 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 da. So I'm just trying to answer all the questions because last week we got cut off. So I'm trying to do this all um, on Backstage or Worldwide. Um, do you have a particular area of voiceover you enjoy working in? Yes, I, well, no, actually, I enjoy working in all of the, <laughs> all of the voiceover things. I've done a lot of tech because I was in Silicon Valley and being the voice of Google Voice that kind of uh, set that off a lot. And I just kind of have this, I don't know this thing on it, but my degrees in communication. So I always wanted to be, you know, Lisa Gibbons or Mary Hart on Entertainment Tonight. That was always my dream. I always wanted to talk about happy things. And so I don't know if that counts, but I really like talking about happy things. I love animation, obviously any kind of voice acting where I'm a character because I'm a studied actress. I, I really love doing that. That's like probably my favorite, favorite, favorite. But I, you know, I turn everything into a fun thing like that and commercials and things like that. Uh, so um, on a side note, uh, there's backstage. Okay. Uh, love your content. Thanks, Brett. Thanks, Brett. I appreciate it. You're on my Instagram too. And I really appreciate it. Um, and I can't wait to sign up for your class. Thank you. I appreciate that too. <laughs> um, I, uh, I'm excited to give the class. It's going to be really fun. So I look forward to seeing you there. Uh, let's see. Hello. I'm just tuning in. So pardon me if this question, Lori, do you listen to completed demos and give feedback for the fee? I am. I'm doing that in my course. So if you go to virtualvoiceover.com, uh, sign up for that and it'll be part of the course. So, uh, yeah, I hope that, that sends that. Uh, and I was really trained. Oh, great. So you do have train training. You could also, um, I, I've kind of really have very, very limited. I was doing private coaching. You can maybe, uh, just, you know, book one time with me if you wanted me to, to listen to it and give you feedback and just kind of square you out if you've already studied. If you don't see a time on there, just write me, but you can look at my calendar and the prices and all that stuff and see if that's right for you. So um, I, again, I'm kind of weaning off the private coaching and going into courses and classes because I've been getting, thank you, everybody, requests for making this kind of available to everybody. And and I really want to do this one-on-one -on -one live stuff. So, and really answer everybody's question. So um, I just remembered I have a microphone that's perfect for voiceover. Great, Maluka, that's awesome. Um, and again, Maluka, look at the, I think it, it's on my YouTube channel. Look at that. And it's, it has a list of some microphones. And then it also, I talk a lot about the different microphones and what they are. So just kind of look at that and that hopefully that'll help you. So um, let's see. Thanks for, um, uh, thanks. Do you have a newsletter? GM, I am, I know I'm a one person show that is now expanding. Uh, so I don't have a newsletter yet, but I will have a newsletter. <laughs> and I keep saying I'm going to do this. But again, it's been a one person kind of show thing, but now I'm expanding. So I will. So sign up at virtualvoiceover.com, get on that list, and you will get some stuff from me. I promise not to send annoying things like, you know, I don't know, just a bunch of emails. I'll try to only give information that you can use. So that is my promise, because I don't know about you, but I've been inundated with with stuff, especially since we've been, you know, quarantined and everything. It's like, oh, my God, I keep unsubscribing to lists because I'm like, there's too many emails. So I'm very conscious of that. I will only send you emails once in a while um, and newsletters. Uh, let's see. And uh, that's okay. Yeah. And so, yeah, newsletters. Great. Uh, again, uh, if you don't have social media, just sign up on my virtualvoiceover.com and that'll get you there. 
Um, Aloha. Oh, thank you. Uh, by Groove Session. I hope you're from, from Hawaii. My brother's there. He's in Maui. My brother, my whole family, my mother uh, and everybody. Uh, great. Um, I am understanding you coach. Yes, that's what I was just talking about. Thank you for asking about this. I really would love some more questions from you guys. Um, if you're not on Tim Ferriss's five bullet Friday email list, you should totally check that out. Yeah, Brett, I like Tim Ferriss too. I really do the four hour work week. I am so into that and um, the entrepreneurial uh, feeling of everything that he said. And here's an ironic thing, Brett. Sorry, I know. Side note, I was reading four hour work week and he mentioned getting Google voice. How funny is that? And I'm the boy. I was the voice of Google Voice. When he wrote that, I was I was just hilarious that I was the voice that he was talking about getting or the whole system. Anyway, I just thought that was funny. No, I didn't get any kickback from that or anything. I'm not associated at all. But I do love his book and I do like his podcast. Um, and he did do a great, um, a great uh, interview with Hugh Jackman. If you're going to watch nothing else, man, listen to that. Or sorry, not watch. Listen, listen to the Hugh Jackman one. That was tremendous. Uh, okay, so uh, let's see what else I'm working on reading the four hour work week. Oh, good, good. Yeah, I love that. And voiceover plays right into that. So uh, because you can set your own schedule, and I have to really deliberately go throughout the day and say when I'm going to record when I'm not. Again, I, I listed all this in the course I'm creating because I had to get it all straight in my mind and look how I've been doing this for so long. So uh, it's all like a very regimented kind of formula that I use to to do voiceover and to read a script and to all these things, I have different methods. So, um, it, which is part of the four hour work week too, is that very organizational kind of thing. So uh, yeah, it is a real weird uh, coincidence. Um, how do you break out of the pattern when saying a, a particularly tricky line? Meaning if you can't get it right, but stuck saying it the same way. Okay, GM, let me give you a little bit. This will be in the course too, but um, when I have a line that something is not, let's say it's something's not flowing for me the way that I'm saying it, right? Look at your words, go down the sentence and punch one word at a time. Start playing with the way that you're saying that sentence. And I guarantee it will, it'll fix that. I, I really guarantee I do it all the time. You know, we all have these words. I mean, and sometimes you're in the studio so long, you're like, I, I say this a lot, but I'm like, toe, toe. How do I say, toe? am I saying toe right? Or is it toe E? Like you're just, you've been in it so long that you're just like, ah. So just read the sentence and uh, those words that are together, maybe punch the word before or the word after and put a pause before or after and really play with it, play with the inflection of it. That also works. And so then you'll go back and you'll figure it out. And most of the time it just, let's say you're delivering this to a client um, you know, it comes off as a, as a choice, not a necessity, right? So it's a choice, not a necessity. I don't know what your sentence is, but I'm, I'm going to guarantee that that will work. Okay. There's, there's other tricks you can do, but that's one of them that I think really, really works. So hopefully that will uh, do it. Brett, I've been doing that punch word trick on my way home from work since you've recommended it a few weeks ago and it works. Oh, yay. Thank you, Brett. I'm so glad that it works. Yeah. I mean, I knew it works, but I'm so glad it works for you. I it's, it's always because we all, you know, our mouths work in different ways. We're not machines, right? And, uh, and so what might be easy for one person might be hard for another. I do a lot of technical stuff and I'm used to doing it. So that has trained me over the years to be pretty good in getting it the first time. But there are some things, I mean, it's like, you know, it's a 15 syllable word. You're like, guys, I don't even, I don't know how to, what this means or how to pronounce it. So you need to come up with some, some tricks to do it. So I've got loads of tricks like that, Brett, tons of tricks like that, that I've used just so I can get this delivered in a good way. So um, can you repeat the site you just mentioned? Virtualvoiceover.com. Okay. Virtualvoiceover.com. Uh, you could go to my website, lauriburke.com, and I think it goes to voice coaching if you wanted to see some of the stuff uh, on there. But really, virtualvoiceover.com should take you in the right place, and then you could go in from there. Okay? 
So um, you're welcome. Thank you. So you guys, I uh, have to go uh, because my time is up here, but you have been great. Thank you for being on. I know it's, it's so much is going on right now, especially today. And I think right now there's a lot of things going on that I'm going to dive into now and see what's going on in the world. But I appreciate you being here and taking an interest in voiceover and, uh, and the whole creativity of it. It's a great world. I hope you get into it. Um, it's a lot of fun. And as you can see, some really nice, wonderful people. So thank you so much. And I hope to see you next time. Okay. Bye.